Hello, I'm Tony Higginson. I'd like to welcome you to this Photoshop tutorial for landscape photographers and I'm going to be focusing on editing your photos using Adobe Camera Raw. Now, I'm going to be going through all the basics, so this is really for beginners and if you open a RAW file in Photoshop it's going to take you into this interface here and this is Adobe Camera Raw and it's fantastic piece of kit you can do a lot in this you can do most of your editing before the image even gets into Photoshop and I'm going to run through all the basic tools that I use now I would go left to right in, in order there's little panels here that you can click so if you left click it takes you through them all and you don't need to know what they all mean but I'm going to start off with this icon here it's the sixth one along and it's called lens correction so I'll go ahead and left click on that and basically you just click the two boxes it removes the chromatic aberration and it corrects the perspective of the image for the distortion that's created by your lens you don't have to do anything else it recognizes what lens you shot it on what focal length and it just does it all for you it's fantastic so you don't really need to know any more than that other than click click uh, I'm going to go from left to right from now on and this is the main panel it's the first one and this has got all your major adjustments that you want to do to an image and the best thing is to have a play open this file up I'm gonna give you a link so you can download this image the actual my raw file and you can edit along with me the first thing I'll do is I'll add some exposure and all this really is is brightness bright dark contrast that's the difference between the lights and darks I go a bit easy with contrast and highlights it does what it says in the tin highlights are the highlights the lighter areas so in this image it'll be the sky and this area of water um, where the sort of the sea foam was running in and out so I'll pull the highlights back just a touch shadows is the opposite of highlights it's obviously the shadows doesn't really need much explaining and you just generally pull it to the right just to just to bring it to life whites and blacks are just extremes of highlights and shadows and to be honest I don't tend to do much with them you can have a, again you can have a play and see what works for you but for me if anything I might just pull my blacks back just a touch clarity now this is something that beginner photographers often go crazy with because when I push it all the way it can create some crazy effects look at that that's like a cartoon and some people like that if you like that great do it crank that clarity up and it's far far better than it used to be it used to really destroy your image but nowadays it's actually quite good so personally I don't like a lot of clarity so I'd very rarely go above 10 with it now vibrance and saturation I'll start with saturation saturation is basically the amount of color in each pixel so it's it's the well it is what it is it's the saturation of the color and it can keep going up and up and up and up and you can end up with crazy effects that they're just over the top vibrance is similar to saturation except it increases the color without oversaturating so I prefer to use vibrance so I'll use a bit of vibrance and I'll add a bit of saturation remember we're dealing with a raw file so you do need to add these things you know you do need to pump up the color and the contrast and these kind of things so that's great so that's only basic edits I've not talked about these top two and this is the color you don't need to mess too much with the green and purples you can adjust them if you want but generally I leave that as is when I, mean, I shoot all my landscapes on auto so they're always set pretty good because modern cameras are superb but if anything I remember it being a little bit warmer than it's showing so I've just warmed it up just a touch there and I prefer that the next panel along is the histogram now this shows the amount of dark and light in the image so these are the brighter pixels at the right hand side and these are the darker pixels at the left so we can adjust this line so if I pull this part down towards the darks the darker areas get darker and these light lighter areas if I pull this up 
the lighter areas get lighter so effectively you're adding contrast really it's very similar to adding contrast and for this image I kind of like it a little bit brighter like that that sort of works for me so just have a play about and see what works and get used to get used to adjusting your histogram the next one is sharpening now camera raw automatically sets your sharpening to 25 which is perfect for me I don't up that I don't want it crazy sharp because I take good quality images and they're already sharp so 25 is plenty and I do sometimes use noise reduction if I've had to use a very high ISO for example if I'm shooting astrophotography but for normal images taken at ISO 100 I don't need to apply noise reduction now this is where we convert an image to black and white if we want we can click convert to grayscale and it goes black and white and then we can individually adjust the brightness of the the different colors so I know this sand for example is orange so if I up the pull the orange to the right that's going to go brighter and it does see and you just go and individually adjust adjust each one as you want it to look but I'm not going to turn this image to black and white so I click that off but what I can do is I can adjust the hue which is the color of the co of the colors I can adjust the saturation of the colors which I've already talked about and I can adjust the luminance of the colors which is the brightness or darkness so if I take an example of this wave here as this wave's crashing over it's a kind of definitely a kind of aqua color a turquoisey and we've got aqua here so if I change the hue of the aqua to blue and push it to the right it's going to change the color of those aqua tones but you notice it doesn't do anything to the oranges because obviously there's no aqua over here in terms of what I want to do for this image I'm quite happy with it where it was now the saturation I do want to up the saturation of the aqua because I quite like that being quite bright and a, a nice feature of the image I think it looks good and in terms of luminance I'm just going to darken it just a touch just to make it a little bit more contrasty from the white areas uh, and just play about and get to know what you know how sliding these sliders affect your overall image it's a great panel that split toning we're not going too deep into split toning you can watch full tutorials on it but effectively you can individually adjust the highlights and the shadows within an image but as a beginner it's not something you need to worry about you can explore that a bit later on we've already covered the lens corrections and the last one is this call this thing called dehaze this is rel a relatively recent addition to camera Raw and photoshop it was a couple of years ago it came out and it was designed to cut through the haze um, the atmospheric haze that you get on a very hot summer's day and it does a brilliant job but it actually is it's turned out to be a useful tool even when there's no haze for just adding pop so I like dehaze you know whereas I said before I'm not keen on clarity which I'm not I do like a bit of dehaze so I'll add a bit of dehaze the only problem is it does tend to darken the image so I've now got to see as I've darkened it that blues come on which means I've now got black areas see and now that I've got black areas I have to go back into the main panel and just lighten it up a bit there's still some blacks there but I'm not overly worried about that so they're the main panels that I use there are also some tools up here now this tool is fantastic this is the straighten tool again you just left click it and all you do is you put the line on the horizon left click move and put the line on the horizon again further along there we go let go and it straightens the image see it's just twisted it just a bit because it was pretty straight I used my leveler in my camera so I knew I was fairly close but I was just a little bit out so I'll double click that and that's it it's straightened next to that tool there's a crop tool so what I can do is I can click the crop tool and you can just 
crop it and do whatever you want with the image make it square do what you you know make it sort of 16 by 9 something like that which is ideal for YouTube and adjust it to your taste there's only one more tool I'm going to show you and that's this graduated filter and this is fantastic I'll just click it and what it does it gives me a cross I left click on the mouse and then move and as I move it gives me these two dots and what the graduated filter does is any effects I apply now in this new panel that's been put on the right hand side will be applied at 100% to the above the green line and then it will fade from 100% to 0% as it goes from green to red so we can adjust this we just move the cursor close to the red do you see the little arrow appears and you can move it up and down if we move it further away you get a little bent arrow and you can you can swing it round so it's a handy tool just for the demonstration purposes I'll push the tint to purple and you see it's been applied above the line at 100% and then it fades down obviously I wouldn't want to do that so to remove any effect in camera raw I just double click on the slider and it goes back to zero now what I may want to do on an image like this is just slightly darken the top down just to bring my eye into the picture so I'll just pull the exposure slightly to the left not a lot in fact only only sort of 0.15 which is fine and that's that done so let's have a look yeah there's nothing really more to do with that image I'm quite happy with it I'm going to go ahead and open that into Photoshop so I just click open image and there it goes so there's lots of other things I can do in Photoshop there's a full panel of tools and graphic designers can do wonderful things but for the photographer the main adjustments that you do can be all be done in camera raw there's just a couple more tools that we can use here for example in this image if I was editing it now I would remove that seaweed I would remove these bits of distractions I would, I would remove these people from the frame so I'd get rid of all of those it's not particularly difficult to do but that's something I'm going to go on to talk about in a future tutorial uh, which is using tools like the healing brush and the clone stamp fantastic tools quite easy to use uh, and also in Photoshop if you look down to the right hand side we've got layers and we can create multiple layers um, with all different effects um, we can we can use masks and adjustment layers the list of things you can do goes on and on and on but I just wanted this tutorial really to focus on the Adobe Camera Raw so that's basically your finished edit as I say barring a few things that can be done it can be tweaked and different things but the majority of what you need to do is done there if I go back to the original look at that that's as it was before we did any work in camera raw you can see it's dark it's cold it's sort of flat and it's not got much color the, the lens correction hasn't been done and it's not straight the horizon and that's got everything done to it looks fantastic so there's a link below this video and you can actually go to my website and download this high resolution raw file of this picture of Durdle Door for yourself and what that means is you can follow along with me watch the tu watch this tutorial again and next time follow along press pause go into Photoshop and repeat what I'm doing and you'll be able to create this same effect with this same file and then if you've got a printer feel free to print yourself a copy out if you if you like the look of it but the main idea is that you learn as you follow along with me so I hope you've picked up these basics about Adobe Camera Raw it's a great tool and the key is practice you know there's no shortcut for experimenting and playing in Photoshop to really hone your skills and before you know it you too will be editing your pictures to have this real color and pop and vibrancy so hope you've enjoyed it if you have please click subscribe and you'll be able to see all my future videos uh, there's already a few on there give them a watch if you fancy and uh, thanks for joining me goodbye